So let's look at tonight's topic. Of all of our senses, the most cherished is usually vision. Uh, the role of glutathione here is implicated in a large number of eye problems. And given the complexity of vision and the extremely sensitive tissues of the eye, it's no surprise that glutathione plays a major role. Uh, research in glutathione has exploded in the last 10 or 20 years, uh, covering a, an increasingly large amount of different diseases. Uh, every month that goes by, I find more and more areas of medicine that glutathione is discovered to play a role. It's almost expected that by the time any of my books have been published, um, it fell short of covering an increasingly larger list of topics. But when we look at glutathione and the eye, this was one of the first areas where glutathione was discovered to play a role. Uh, some of the earliest studies uh, go back to the 1930s. Uh, here's uh, the old, oldest one that you could find on PubMed, which dates back to 1946. Uh, the earliest work was focused on cataract formation. So this is, uh, this is quite a while ago. But since then, the, the list of eye diseases associated with glutathione has, has really expanded. Uh, cataracts, macular degeneration, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, uh, keratitis, and, and more. Uh, the list is long, but today we're going to take a look at just a few of them. Everybody ready? So cataracts, um, the lens of the eye is the only organ in the body that does not shed or lose cells. Uh, nutrients needed by the lens are delivered through the liquid surrounding the lens rather than by blood vessels. And for this reason, uh, higher antioxidant levels than usual are needed to ensure adequate protection. Uh, cataract is a clouding of the lens of the eye. It's a leading cause of functional impairment among the elderly in this country. Uh, here we see a diagram of a healthy lens on the left and a lens that has developed the cataract on the right. Um, you see the, the loss of a clear lens and the development of a cloudy one um, uh, right there on the right. The, the lens of the eye is not at all like the lenses that make up your glasses. Uh, the lens of the eye is actually a little bag of clear fluid that is very sensitive to biochemical changes. And the resulting loss of vision um, is a general fogginess and, and a loss of color. Uh, this article by Frank uh, Giblin um, way back in 2009 points out the essential role that glutathione plays in maintaining the clarity of the lens. So it's, it's a good one to study the actual mechanisms involved. Uh, here is an early article that makes an important point that individuals with low glutathione levels uh, suffer a much greater frequency of cataracts. So this is a, a basic point that is made here. Moreover, people who have genetic abnormalities in glutathione levels also are more prone to develop cataracts. And as we do genetic testing for more and more, these associations uh, will become more apparent. Uh, here here we, we have a review of nutritional supplements uh, to address the prevention of even or even treatment of age-related cataracts. Of course, glutathione is highlighted. I, I know that in the Q&A following the presentation, there will be a good number of people sending in their anecdotes on Immunical and cataracts. I, I've heard many stories about people who were scheduled to have cataract surgery, who had to cancel 
their appointments because their supplementation with immunical apparently resolved the problem. I wish we could uh, go on to uh, study this so we can use real clinical research instead of just testimonials. Um, maybe that day will come. Let's take a look at macular degeneration. Uh, macular degeneration is a condition where a progressive loss of vision happens from a slow breakdown of the macula. Uh, the macula is uh, the part of the retina which functions uh, uh, for fine vision. Uh, Age-related macular degeneration, or ARMD, is one of the leading causes of visual loss in people over the age of 65. Although its um, susceptibility is predominantly genetic, it can be made worse by smoking or arteriosclerosis. Uh, looking at the eye in cross-section, uh, we can see that the retina is at the back of the eye. Uh, this is where the lens focuses images and these images are received and processed and sent to the visual center of the brain. Uh, the macula is the part of the retina that picks up and carries the most signals. Uh, on the left, we see that the macular area is, is damaged, um, I'm sorry, on the right, and starting uh, to break down. Uh, you, you see it here? Uh, the resultant vision depends on the degree of damage, but the loss of vision is primarily at the center uh, where visual vision is, is normally at its finest. Uh, vision at the periphery is often spared, but trying to focus on your peripheral vision is really hard. Uh, you can see from the picture of, uh, here that how, how difficult uh, this must be. So it's been many years that oxidative stress has been identified as the culprits involved. Uh, this disease is thought to be a result of free radical damage over time, in particular by exposure to ultraviolet or UV sunlight, but uh, also to other sources of oxidative stress. And of course, in general, when we are talking about high levels of oxidative stress, we're talking about low levels of glutathione. And this turns out to be the case. Uh, this has been established many years ago. Glutathione measurements are universally lowered in macular degeneration. And here the authors are describing how low blood glutathione levels occur. This, this usually takes place along with the aging process. So we drop glutathione as we age, and in a way, macular degeneration can be viewed as a disease of aging as well. And of course, people with abnormal glutathione genetics have a much higher rate of macular degeneration. Again, as we get better at looking at our own genome and as prices for these tests get lower, uh, we'll be able to determine these associations more and more as we, we go on into the future. Soon, I, I would say in the next five years, it will be unusual for someone not to have been doing genetic testings on themselves. This is um, now quite affordable. And finally, can raising glutathione levels fix this problem? Uh, here we see a few articles uh, where researchers used NAC to raise glutathione and results were promising. Uh, more work uh, to come, but certainly much room for optimism. Although you may not have heard of it before. You probably have seen someone with a pterygium before, a pterygium. If you look at the eye, you'll see a, a, a growth of superficial tissue growing over the cornea. That's the white part of the eye. It can continue to grow and, and even cover the iris. That's the colored part. And even extend over the pupil, which is much rarer. This is a this is a case you see a picture of, which is a really uh, uh, far progressed. 
He doesn't generally pose any threat to visual acuity, and it can be easily treated with surgery. A, a pterygium is more likely in people exposed to wind, sand, and sun. So it's much more common in uh, people from uh, the islands or the coast. Uh, it, it's sometimes referred to as surfer's eye. Uh, clearly, glutathione and oxidative stress are involved in pterygium formation. Uh, glutathione levels are low in the actual tissues involved. In addition, individuals with glutathione enzyme abnormalities are more prone to the development of this problem. Moving on to glaucoma. Uh, this is a, a very serious eye condition uh, caused by rising fluid pressure within the eye. Uh, glaucoma is, again, one of the leading causes of visual loss. Uh, we become more susceptible as we age, but there's a, a genetic component that may be there as well. It's also associated with diabetes, high blood pressure, and also with uh, severe myopia. Uh, there are uh, several types of glaucoma, uh, including primary opal, open angle glaucoma, angle closure glaucoma, and normal tension glaucoma, but we won't get into the differences now. Uh, here we see a cross section of an eye uh, with a glaucomatous eye on the right. Uh, on the left, we see that the fluid in the eye, which is normally draining through what is called the trabecular meshwork, uh, becomes blocked. Uh, what happens afterward is that the pressure builds up inside of the eyeball, causing a compression of the small blood vessels in the retina. And uh, this uh, uh, leads to decreased blood flow and uh, subsequent damage to the tissues, especially the optic nerve, which you can see at the back of the eye. Uh, this can present as an emergency uh, where a rapid lowering of the pressure is needed, either surgically or more, most often with drugs. Glutathione's presence in the fluid of the inner eye uh, not only detoxifies the, this liquid, but also has been shown to improve the circulation and outflow of this fluid. Uh, researchers have demonstrated that glutathione depletion and increased oxidative stress in the eye's drainage system correlates with an increased likelihood of going on to glaucoma. Uh, it's been clearly established that glutathione levels are low in most types of glaucoma. Here we see a study that measured glutathione and compared it with uh, normal controls. And uh, we find glutathione levels universally lowered. Uh, in this rare old Russian study, uh, several hundred patients were recruited. And yes, glutathione levels were lowered, but they were also able to stratify the, the patients into different stages. Even in the earliest stages of glaucoma, glutathione was lowered, uh, allowing the researchers to raise glutathione through nutritional means. Uh, this is a, a study way back in 1992, a great promise indeed. In this study, uh, intraocular glutathione levels were not measured. Instead, blood levels of glutathione in patients with glaucoma were compared to, to those without glaucoma. Even there, glutathione levels were lowered, which means that even measuring blood glutathione levels can be predictive of this condition. Here we have a meta-analysis which drew in literally thousands of cases. And once again, genetic testing for glutathione enzyme abnormalities shows a correlation with abnormal glutathione and the development of glaucoma. So keep your glutathione levels up, folks. So we have looked at a good number of eye diseases in which glutathione has been linked with. 
uh, essentially low glutathione and high oxidative stress are risk factors, if not the primary pathology behind cataracts, macular degeneration, pterygium, glaucoma, and others. We, we could have included several other eye pathologies as well. In addition, now that we're doing genetic testing more and more, it's been shown that abnormal glutathione genes are strongly correlated with the risk of developing these diseases. So raising glutathione is a simple strategy that I suggest we all take advantage of.